Hello, welcome back to Let's Talk Politics on Niger and Codis. Today's focus is on the proposed creation and presentation of the 39 United States of Biafra and their capital, Ebu Bay, to the Nigerian government by the self acclaimed Prime Minister, Simon Epa. In a post on his verified ex handle, Simon T the Nigerian government must recognize these 40 Biafran states released in Nandi Kanu and withdraw all Nigerian forces from the 40 states to restore peace in the nation. Here are the 39 states and the capital, Ikemba State, Omambala State, Odumegu State, Ebonyi State, Eda State, Uhuku State, Enugu State, Alanso State, Ohebonyi State, Eziala State, Lower Benue State, Olu State, Oweri State, Okigwe State, Aba State, Ikumesia State, Alaudu State, Igbanyi State, Auda State, Iworoha State, Koko State, Agbo State, Ugeli State, Anyoma State, Southern Atlantic State, Ogbia State, Oguan State, Berenem State, Essan State, Afemai State, Eden State, Oro Kwaban State, Kwa State, Itayanang State, Udung Ibon State, Kalaba State, Ikom State, Ogoja State, Izumama State, and Ebube, the Federal Capital Territory. The map shown by Prime Minister spans several southern eastern states, including all the Igbo states, uh, parts of Benue State in the south, and it encompasses the entire state of Cross River and Akwaibom. Simon Ekpa, the Prime Minister, has mandated the Nigerian government to do three things for peace to reign in the country. One, accept the 40 states of the Biafra nation. Two, release Nandi Kanu. Three, withdraw all Nigerian military troops from the east and cease all military operations in Biafra land. This is undoubtedly a bold and ambitious message, but certain critical checks need to be made. First, we must ask questions that need answers to determine the feasibility of realizing this United States of Biafra. The first question is, who are the Biafrans? Is the 40 United States of Biafra solely intended for the Igbos? If the answer is yes, why then include parts of Benue, Cross River, Akwaibon, Rivers, and Delta states, where inhabitants are not Igbo speaking people? In a video three years ago, Nandi Kanu clearly stated, I must warn also Governor Autumn of Benue State. I am not laying claim to Benue State, the entirety of Benue State, not at all. What I'm making very clear to you is that there are Igbo people, Igbo communities, not traders, not migrants, not settlers, no. These are our traditional towns, communities and villages, wickedly gerrymandered into the north. However, he failed to name those communities. But let's examine the Benue State map and see if we can identify these Igbo communities. Before checking that map, consider this post made by Igbo History on the 3rd of September 2022. It reads, The Igbos in Benue State, particularly those in Ado, Oju, Obi, and Opoku local governments of the state, were in existence before the advent of Christianity in Nigeria. Now, let's take a look at the map of the 40 United States of Biafra as proposed by Simon Ekba. According to Ekba's map, the lower region of Benue State is called Adoka State. The state capital is Konsha. If you are familiar with Benue State map, you will understand that Adoka, Oju, Obi, Okboku, and the rest of the Igbo communities are in Zone C of the state, while Konsha is in Zone A. Konsha is entirely occupied by the Tif people, so how does this add up? Let's watch this video of Nandi Kanu. For those of you that specialize in, sh should I say, in twisting the obvious, in turning truth into lies, I never claimed the whole of Benue State. You people carved Igbo people into Benue, which is unacceptable. We are in an era, not that of the old, compromised and discredited Ohanese and Diara and Yushu. Not in that very era. No, we are not in that anymore. We are not in the era of compromised governors in the pocket of the Fulani Caliphate. No, we are now in the era of IPOB. And no inch of territory belonging to traditional, should I say, ethnicities making up Biafra will be surrendered to anybody now. Okay, he mentioned that 
there are Igbo communities in Benue State, and he said he's not interested in taking over the Benue State, the entire of Benue State. He's only concerned with those Igbo communities. But let's check uh, this material from Wikipedia. From this picture, you can clearly see that Oju and Obi are the only local governments that have Igbo settlement. Consider this picture. This is Konsha. Konsha is primarily populated by members of the Thief ethnic group and the Thief language is widely spoken in the area. Now, the biggest issue here is that there is a serious or there have always been serious communal crisis between the Konsha people and the Oju people who bothered them to the southwest. So, isn't it a catastrophe in the making bringing these people together to form a state? Even the Oju are OB, which have small segments of Igbos, are still minorities. In Benue State, should two local governments, which have less than 1% of the Igbo population, be included in the Biafra nation just because of this less than 1% population? This is the issue. But this issue isn't just about being a minority. The problem is, why should their capital come from a thief-speaking region? And the Adoka considered the name of the state is a minority local government among these local governments. So this is already a bad idea before it even started. The second question is, if the Biafra nation is not only for the Igbos, are the other tribes in agreement to be part of this new nation? The inclusion of River State and Delta State is very questionable because on several occasions, the Ijo and Wari people have stated that they are not part of Biafra. <laughs> Ibo Biafran! On a mumu carry on a, on a don't land for inside Atlantic Ocean or, or is it uh, Pacific Ocean? Now where I land on, I don't know. I will kill him! Baba. Enam the camera and his people running their mouth. Don't start something you cannot finish. Oh. That is that is a video of Asari Dokubo mocking the Igbo and Biafran leaders. In another video he made just a year ago, he stated that the Igbos are the major problem of Nigeria and they should be allowed to go so that Nigeria will have peace. Peace in the name of God. Why do we allow this vicious cycle of irritation of one people claiming to be victim when they are really the aggressors, when they are really the people offending others, let us allow them go. National Assembly, let us vote, let them go so that we, the, the body, there be more resources for other people to manage. If they want, to, if we don't even need a referendum, the president should meet, the National Assembly should meet, somebody courageous enough to sponsor a bill at the National Assembly. There should be a constitutional, uh, a constitutional amendment. The five Igbo state and any group of people who want to join them, let them join the, let them join the Igbos and go. You see that he actually counted the Ijo people as part of Nigeria because he was referring to the Igbos as they. So why include their lands on the map? What happens if the federal government recognizes the United States of the Biafra nation? How would they manage all these faction and different temperaments? There is another bigger hurdle Simon Ekpa and his co-travelers must overcome before realizing the dream of a United States of the Biafra nation. There is a saying that any house that fights within itself cannot stand. So, what about the weakest? Those Igbo sons and daughters who have strong roots in the Nigerian government. How is the Biafra minister and his comrades planning to deal with these figures? who will lose their relevance once Biafra becomes a nation. In an interview many years back, Wiki stated that he supports the Biafra nation and Biafra agitation. There's nothing wrong in people agitating. All is important, listen to the agitations. What are they talking about? Sit down with them, talk with them. Right? There's nothing wrong about that. I support the agitation, 
and support the injustice against the Southeast, would anybody like it or not? I do. We should sit down on the right table and discuss it. Not only that. Now, all these people who are shouting now, they support IPOP. Ask me. Any of their parents, with all due respect today, let them come and tell me who came out to say, IPOP, I'm with you. IPOP, what they are doing is right. IPOP, wherever you go, I am. Mm. And people now, you see, that's what I don't like in Nigerian politics. Everybody, because we're in the election, you want to take advantage. I read what they were saying, that we can say, I don't need IPOP. I don't need Southeast. After all, I'm with the North. I'm with the Southwest. I would deny that data. I would win an election. Who is the Southeast? You know, you read some of this, you just laugh. The point I'm making, right. brother, whether anybody likes it or not, mm. there is injustice in the country. Mm. That division in the country. You see, before his election, he was all for the Biafra to get the support and vote of the Igbo people, and it worked. But after he won, the moment he became the governor, he declared that River State was an integral part of Nigeria and he banned any Biafran protest in the state. And an exercise of my constitutional responsibility to preserve the safety, security, and corporate integrity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it is hereby ordered that all forms of street protests, demonstrations, rallies, or unlawful gatherings associated with agitation for the secession of any group from the Federal Republic of Nigeria are banned in River State. Any person or group who violates this ban or acts in any manner prejudicial to the interests of peace and security will be arrested and prosecuted. Them, them. Anybody who is an IPOP member that will see me, and you know, there are things people shouldn't talk about. Some of us, they may have found that we are governor of Nami that we don't know how we are. You see, we are caught because of the position that we occupy. Are there anybody? He cannot. I'm not that kind of governor. Nobody. He can't try that. So you can move freely in Europe now without the fear of... No, but I will never even look back. There. Aside from Wiki, what about late Ifanyo Ba and his likes? Simon Ekpa alleged that late Ifanyo Ba sent men to kill him in Finland. Before them, there was a report that Ifanyo Ba had sent a battle warning to Simon Ekpa. Uh, if I remember, has sent a threatening message to Mas Simon Eba saying that for the sit at home order, they will forgive Simon Eba. But if he continues with the sit at home, they will deal with him furiously. <laughs> so after the attack on Simon Eba in Finland, he accused If I Uba of being the sponsor. So you see, there is a fight between the Ebos the stakeholders, the statesmen, and the agitators. No wonder when Ifan Yoba died, Samuel Ekpa was among those accusing him of dying on top of a prostitute. He actually celebrated Uba's death in several posts. Now, one of those posts was made on the 27th day of July, 2024. He said, the criminal Ifan Yoba who sent people to attack me in Finland, he has masterminded the IPOP Nigeria protest against me in Finland. I've received intel that he died on top of a woman in London Hotel. I hope it is not on top of how. The point we are making is that many people like Wiki and Ifan Yoba from the proposed Biafran region are covertly working against the liberation of the Biafran nation in the background. Let's listen to this guy. Now the question is, why are they not talking about these things and why are they not standing on the regionalism and dissolution of Nigeria. The reason is this. They have their own benefit that they are benefiting from this contraption or this business they call Nigeria. Because as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria is a business to the detriment of the poor and the profit is for the rich that call themselves so-called politicians. So we can see that this Biafra agitation is marred or sabotaged by some selfish individuals who should have joined forces to fight for the nation's independence as alleged by Okocha's video. It is time for us to hold these people on their truth because they know the truth. Because of the money they are benefiting from politics, that is why they are doing all sorts of things. Our uh, is not speaking for us. 
where we are on hands and Dibu, where our when our people were massacred in Mpoh, when our people were massacred in in in, in Iguacha, when our people were massacred in Asaba, where we are there, what did they do? What did they say? When our people were massacred and dumped inside the Zuri River in Anambra State, what did Ohaneze do? They did nothing. For over 54 years now, Ohaneze Ndibo has been there, taking money, enjoying them their lives, not thinking about the future of the children whom they believe, whom they say that they are protecting. So Ohaneze Ndibo, they are irrelevant. They have nothing to tell us. They have nothing to do for us. Namde Kanu is the only one. Isn't it ironic how a disunited nation or group of people is fighting for a united nation? This agitation for Biafra will just linger on forever if these issues raised are not addressed. These are the same reasons why Nigerians feel that the agitation for a united state of Biafra won't hold water and is considered as a distraction to national development and security. Finally, why 39 states? For a region that is not united in its pursuit of a united nation, why not draft a map that comprises the main Igbo speaking states so they can better manage their affairs effectively? But instead, they drafted a 39 state that include other states that will most likely not want to be part of the Biafra region. Do they want to be like America? Finally, Simon Ekpa, Mazina Dikano, and commanders of the Biafra nation should look inward and put their house in order if they really mean business. Because the attack from inside is more deadly than the external. Instead of fighting the federal government, why not tackle the malls within you? There is a popular Yoruba proverb that says, The insect that eats the leaves, lives on the leaves. Talk to us in the comment section. Do you think the proposed 40 states of the United States of Biafra will come to pass? Will Simon Ekpa be able to pull this through? Will the Nigerian government even pay any attention? What are the possibilities? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Let's talk politics.